Three, two, one. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Welcome to our June 16, 2022 Special Magistrate Hearing for the Building Division. If there's anyone who wishes to speak at today's proceedings, please stand and raise your right hand. You must be sworn in to speak at today's proceedings. Do you solemnly swear and affirm to tell the truth at today's proceedings? Thank you. You all may be seated. At this time, please silence all of your devices. Our first case is on page nine. It's an old business case, Inspector Nash Maddox. Property address 2165 Northwest 19th Street. Owner, Travelers Express Services, Inc. Case number BE 2110280. This case was first heard on 5-19-22 to comply by 6-16-22. Six sections not complied at $50 per violation. And this was ordered to rip here. Good morning, Your Honor. Good morning. Good morning, Your Honor. Inspector Matic, um, updating the case from the last time. Uh, this case uh, complied with four out of six violations. Uh, the owner is working diligently to comply with the rest of the violations to, to clear them all out. I'm sorry, would you repeat that, please? The Owner, the new owner of this property that bought it with violations cleared out four of the six existing violations All right. from the previous owner, and he's diligently working on clearing the other two um, as of now. Inspector, can you let us know which of the four violations are in compliance? Okay, um, sir, if you... Violation... Go ahead, I'm sorry. 9-308B, uh, uh, blue tarp, shingle debris on roof. Um, which is not a permanent functional element of a roof. Violation 9-280H1. Uh, there's multiple fences on this property in this repair and is not being maintained as required. Um, nine dash two eighty G, their electrical accessory not maintained in a good safe working condition. That was um rectified, and 9-306, there are areas of fascia, fascia and soffit of the exterior of the south building that um, uh, has deteriorated and missing, have uh, missing paint or uh, peeling paint. That was all rectified. The violation that still stand, um, By violation BCZ 39-296, uh, there is an illegal land uh, use occurring at this B3 county zone property, which was um, used as a residence instead of a business. And there is 9-1D, um, the, the roof on one of the buildings was installed without obtaining a permit. All right. All right, sir, if you'll speak right into the microphone and state your name, please. Good morning, Your Honor. Sean Singh. All right. I don't exactly recall this case, but when it's a uh, mandatory order to reappear, typically we're looking for progress and uh, compliance. So you're getting almost there. What's the story with the last two uh, violations? Okay, on the land use, it was the previous owner who was occupying it. I don't live there. I don't occupy it. I just use it for my business. So, you know, I'm trying to work with the city to get a non-conforming in order to maintain the residence that's there. But I don't live on the property, you know, Your Honor. But I have to have a watchman on the property based upon the type of the nature of the business I have. Okay, what kind of business is it? It's a trucking company. All right. I'm still waiting on the city to get back to me because mm -hmm. I filed for the non-conforming, but it's a wait in reference to get it resolved with that part, even if I'm going to have someone on the premises. All right. And the other one? The other one on the violation of the roof. Um, this roof job was done maybe eight, ten years ago, and um, the previous owner said he had some permits pull uh, for work that was done, and at that point 
they didn't require him to pull a permit in 2014 when it was done. So I'm still trying to get a GC in order to pull the permit if needed to get it resolved. So that's my other option right now. But I need some time to get that done. Okay, what's the plan to remedy that? Um, I have to pull a permit if needed, you know, because I, I hired a GC, but because of the time frame I got the last time I was in court and was asking for a little more time to get it resolved on the roof. Okay. All right. Anything further from the city? Uh, we can recommendations. We can extend it for 62 days till the next uh, special magistrate in August. 63. I'm going to uh, okay. Uh, us grant a, a, a 63 day extension till August 18th, 2022. Thank you. And with a man mandatory reappearance. Thank you, sir. Okay. Our next case is on page five. Inspector Hector Suarez, property address 3420, I'm sorry, 3240 South Federal Highway, owner 27th Avenue Enterprises LLC, case number BE 22030033. Notice posted at the property on 511.22, posted at City Hall 6222. This is a new business case. Good morning, Your Honor. Good Inspector morning. Suarez presenting case BE 22030033, 3240 South Federal Highway. Property was inspected on March 8th, 2022, and the following violation was observed as depicted in the photos. 257A, it is unlawful to obstruct the right of way, alleyway with a fence. 91D, any violation of the Florida Building Code shall be a violation of the section and punishable as provided for in the section. There is construction work at this property that was started or completed without obtaining the permit, obtaining the required permit consistent of, but not limited to fence. Inspection report was mailed to owner listed in BCPA on March 8th, 2022. Final notice sent on May 10th, 2022. As of pre-hearing inspection on June 10th, 2022, violation remains. The city is requesting also, BLD FEN 22060046 permit was applied for and is in process for the fence. Uh, the city is requesting 42 days or $50 a day thereafter per each violation. I'm sorry, fine per. $50 or 42 days, 42 days or $50. 42 days or For both violations. How many dollars? 50. Okay, sorry. All right, sir, speaking in the microphone, please state your name. My name is Ronald, last name is Coletto. Okay. The owners. Did you understand what this gentleman said? Yes, I'm the actual uh, GC for this project as well. Okay. Been so. hired by the owners. Uh, we already apply for both permits. And um, I would like to request 90 days after permit issuance for compliance, please. The city does not object to that. Six. So it will be uh, how many days? 90. 91 days it would be. Okay. All right. I find the violation do exist. You change your recommendation to 91? 91 days. We don't object to. Okay. This. 91 days to comply, $50 per day thereafter. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Our next case is on page four. Inspector Hector Suarez, property address right. 501, Southeast 33rd Street. Owner, 27th Avenue Enterprises, LLC. Case number BE 22030031. Notice posted at the property on 511.22, posted at City Hall 6222. Good morning, Your Honor. Again, Inspector Suarez presented case BE 22030031, 501 Southeast 33rd Street. Property was inspected on March 8th, 2022, and the following violation was observed as depicted in the photos 257A. It is unlawful to obstruct the right of way alleyway with fence 91d any violation of the florida building code shall be a violation of the section and punishable as provided for in this section there is construction work at this property that was started or completed without obtaining the required permits consistent of but not limited to fence inspection report was mailed to owner listed in bcpa on march 8 2022 final notice sent on may 10 2022 as of pre-hearing inspection on June 10th, 2022, violation remains. Um, there is a 
Fence Building Permit, BLDFEN 22060047. It is in process. The city is requesting 42 days or $50 a day thereafter per each violation per day. Okay, just for the record, if you'll state your name again, please. My name is Ronald, last name Coletto. I'm okay. also the DC on file for this pro uh, project and also been hired by the owner to take care of this matter. Um, I'm requesting 90 days or 91 days after permit issuance. Okay. The city does not object. All right. Okay. For the record, I find the violation does exist. 91 days to comply, uh, $50 per day thereafter. Good luck. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Our next case is a hearing to impose fines on page 10. Inspector Leonardo Martinez, property address 1324, Northwest 9th Ave. Owner, Dialofetis Jean Jules. Uh, please forgive me if I mispronounced that. Case number BE 22040127. This case was cited on 41822 to comply by 41922. One section not complied at $250. City is requesting to impose the full amount of $14,250. Appeal deadline was 5-3-22. No appeal received. Good morning, Your Honor. Good morning. Inspector uh, Martinez, uh, case and address as read. Uh, city is requested to impose the full amount. Okay, this was a citation. No appeal received. All right, sir, if you'll... Speak right to the microphone and state your name, please. My name is uh, Gene Jules, I'll do All right. And uh, I was in uh, Orlando uh, because uh, uh, for my doctor appointment. And then uh, because see my, all my children live in Orlando, so they got me a doctor in Orlando. So while I'm over there, and then uh, the people that live with me uh, in the property, and then they uh, uh, called me, and then they told me that uh, the uh, the bathroom was stuck. And then I uh, I called somebody so to uh, to unclog the, uh, the, the 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 bathroom for me. So he went uh, he went uh, and dig up the pipe, and then which I don't ask him to do. And then so uh, so they called me and they called me they tell me that uh, uh, a neighbor called call the uh, city, and then uh, so this, that's why it is. Uh... Your Honor, just to let you know, uh, that house was rented, it's a duplex, and it was on that condition with the hall and the sewer open for over six months. I, I mean, I, I would like to repeat whatever the, the neighbor told me that it's been over a year. The house was supposed to be connected to the city sewer a long time ago and never happened. And they dug the, the sewer and leave, leave it open so, you know, um, uh, all, all the, the, um, the feces were out there on the, on, on the ground. And, uh, and the tenant was complaining about it. And she said that she, since she was rented there, the place was at that way. Okay, as now, there is a permit that uh, is, is been applied and I still have corrections to be answered in the city. So, um, I mean, as now, uh, the city doesn't um, want any other extension. Uh, we're asking the fines to be imposed. And when he complies the case, he can come back for a, a loan reduction. Uh, yeah, as well as this is a uh, citation case. No appeal was taken. Uh, the violation is deemed to be admitted under the ordinance. I have no alternative other than to impose the fine and the uh, fines will continue to accrue. Sir, I, I, I don't know who you are, you own this house, how long you've owned this house, whatever, but you've accumulated $14,250 in fines as of today. It'd be another $250 as of tomorrow and the same for the next day, next day, next day, okay? So you need to get this violation corrected. I don't know if there's someone who can help you, or you have relatives or what, but you need to pay attention to this. Yes, I have a, a contractor, a licensed contractor, working on that project for me. But uh, we went down and applied for a permit, so we just uh, waiting for the permit. 
Okay, so my ruling stands, but pay attention to this, all right? Thank you, Your Honor. Yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Our next case is on page three. Chief George Oliva, property address 1900 Northeast 8th Court, owner Gateway Arms, Homeowners Association, Inc., case number BE 2201-0094. Notice posted at the property on 510-22, posted at City Hall 6222. Good morning, Your Honor. Good morning. Chief George Oliva, in behalf of the city, case and address as presented. Uh, this is a 40-year case, and the owner submitted the report to the city, but it fell due to repairs. So the city is going to request for the owner to come back with a clean report and a 180-day extension from today, or $100 per day thereafter. All right, sir, if you'll speak in the microphone and state your name, please. Tom Hardaway. All right. Do you understand what this gentleman said? Uh, yes. Uh, if possible, I would like to be granted more than 180 days. Uh, we're facing financial difficulties. We just uh, replaced our roof. Finally got a loan. The lien was satisfied yesterday. Um, we did have an engineering report done last year, and that engineering firm did not supply any drawings or specifications, which I thought that they, I, I don't know if they're required to do that or not. They just said there's problem with an exit light and spalling. So we have talked to a contractor about fixing that. Um, at this point, I don't know what his time frame is. Well, sir, this is a safety issue. Yes, it it's is. a significant safety issue. I'm not inclined to extend the time. For the record, I find the violation does exist. 180 days to comply, $100 per day, per day thereafter. All right, so just one question. Uh, is the engineering firm that did the study required to give us any specifications? You need to speak to one of the representatives of the building department. They'll give you information or answer your questions. Okay, that's not what we do here today. Okay. Uh, will you notify me by writing of this decision? Is that how it works? You get an order in the mail. Yeah, okay. you get an order in the mail. All right, thank you. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Your Thank you. Our next case is on page 13. Senior Inspector Alejandro Del Rio, property address 515 Northeast 4th Street, case number BE 21010006, owner 515 Inc. This case was first heard on 5-2021 to comply by 7-2221. Two sections not complied at $50, one section not complied at $50. Fines were imposed on 8-19-21. We are, the city is requesting to amend orders from 5-2021 and 8-19-21, asking to amend the orders to remove violations FBC 2020-105.1 and 47-19.2HH.2.2.C. And the new fine amount would be $16,400, which continues to accrue. Okay. All right. Building Inspector Alejandro El Rio for the city. Um, the request by the city was already read. All right. Hi, good morning, Your Honor. This is Roy Edwards with toothacre.org. I'm here on behalf of the property owner. Um, and so this whole situation um, was an effort by Rhythm and Vine, the restaurant that we all know and love in downtown. And they really just wanted to create more outdoor space for their customers during the pandemic. And um, you know, so they had very good intentions. And um, now we have been recently hired by them, um, and the good intentions continue to um, uh, amend the change of use, which is the last violation on this case. So we're processing that right now. And because of all those reasons, 
Um, we would like um, an extension of 90 days to um, obtain that change of use and then also please a hold of fines um, until we get everything amended okay. and complied. Do you want to add anything? Um, no, Your Honor. I mean, just to clarify and for the record, Rhonda Montoya Hassan with the City Attorney's Office, of the three violations um, on this uh, case, um, as um, read into the record, the the city's asking to amend the two orders to remove the second and the third. So okay. the only, and remove the fines associated with the second and the third. So the only one that's left is the first one. Um, council has asked for an additional 90 days. I would just point out to your honor that um, even though the, the firm has been recently hired, this has been in, not, not in compliance for 300 in 28 days uh, yeah this goes way way back so it would be the city's position that we keep this and then once the property does come into compliance they can seek relief through the lien reduction program yes yeah. okay so, yes ma'am i just want to add really quick um the two other violations they were actually put onto the, uh, another property a wrong property so from the beginning there was just like a little bit of confusion and a little bit of miscommunication between the tenant and the property owner, but of course everything is, um, they're very aware of everything right now and are taking the correct approach to um, remedy everything and, and get into compliance. So yeah, if and um, that's why we're requesting the extension and, and hold the fines. All right, um, okay. First of all, I'm gonna grant the um, uh, request to amend the orders of uh, 5 2021 and 8 21 yeah, this thing, this has been going on with a long, for a long time. I intend to agree with the city. Let's get this in compliance, then take a look at the fines. So I'm going to impose the fines that will continue to accrue. This is top hat, right? Not. This is rhythm and vine. Rhythm and vine. Oh, okay. It's like the, right. out, the outdoor it. restaurant. Okay, I got it. Okay. All right. Thank you, council. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Our next case is a new business case on page three. Chief George Oliva, property address 2300 Northwest 6th Street, owner SKAB LLC, case number BE 21090177. Notice posted at the property on 52622, posted at City Hall 6222. In this case, we want to vacate the order from 12022 and now we're to a new business case. Your Honor, uh, the city requested to vacate the previous order due to the fact that we have a brand new owner on the building. And the owner did came and, and filed the report with us for the, for the 40 years. And the report requires repair. So we are here requesting an extension of 180 days for the owner to come into compliance with a new report with no repairs or a hundred dollars per day thereafter. Okay. Representative of the owner present? No. Oh, someone signed it? 2300 Northwest 6th Street. Someone signed in. Maybe, I don't know. Maybe they went to the restroom. Mm -hmm. Want to re recall it? Give it a minute and recall it? I would say so. If you want to. Yeah, we'll do that. Yep. Maybe okay. they went to the restroom. Okay. Sorry about that. Page, uh, moving on to page seven. Inspector Leonardo Martinez, property address 100 Southwest 3rd Ave, owner Nugent Avenue Retail LLC, case number BE 22040210. Notice posted at the property on 5422, posted at City Hall 6222. Good morning, Your Honor. Inspector Martino representing the city. Case and address as read. I visited this property with building inspector Farbot, who was asking the owner to take some action on the railings condition. And after not obtaining any response, he contacted our department for help. While in the property, I observed that in several areas of the railing connections did not exist because of the corrosion at the base. And there are other connections that are 
corroded throughout the base, which make the railings unsafe. Also, there are areas under the railings where the concrete floor is cracked. The property was cited on the uh, Florida Building Code 2020, section 116.1.1, as unsafe structure. This case, this case was opened and inspection report was mailed out to the property owner on April 29 of 2022. The notice of hearing was posted at the property on May 4th of 2022. We are asking your owner to find that the violations does exist and to grant the property owner with 30 days to apply for the required permit to fix the railings or fines of $100 per day thereafter. And we would like for them to reappear in the next hearing with an update. Okay. All right, sir, if you'll speak right into the microphone and state your name. Sure, uh, Francis Berlin for the property owner. All right, anything you'd like to add? What's, what are you gonna do with this building? Uh, so the, uh, the inspector, uh, I'm, I'm sorry, uh, Far, Farbouge, uh, he had notified the tenant uh, who was who occupies the entire space? Uh, we the the property owner uh, had no notice of the condition uh, until the violation was issued, uh, which I which is dated May second. Once uh, the property owner learned of the violation, spoke to the the tenant. Uh, we spoke to, to both owners, um, or both members of the LLC which is 3J Hospitality LLC. Uh, as per the lease, they are responsible for the work. Uh, I was on site yesterday. Uh, they provided me with an estimate uh, for, a, for a welder. Uh, they're doing the work under permit PM-1812900. Thomas Kelleher is the engineer of record. Uh, I believe the work will be done next week. Uh, the, the welders are procuring materials this week. It should be done uh, next week, hopefully by the end of the month. The engineer will come back out to inspect, and we can close out the permit and the violation. Uh, excuse me, owner. That I know of, there is no permit application for that scope of work. Uh, the permit that you mentioned, and it's about all the work that was permitted on that property, and... Uh, it doesn't belong to that one. There is no permit and so nobody should be working on that property, doing any work before the prescribed remedy from an engineer is submitted to the city and the, with the permit application. So I, I don't know, I so mean. Uh, the, the particular uh, permit, the, the one that I just referenced, if you look at the plans, it specifically mentions exterior uh, repair work to be done uh, as needed under the supervision of an engineer. But so, so what I know to now, and I've been in contact with Inspector Farber, there is nothing in reference to the railings on that permit that you're mentioning. Uh, we can talk after if you. Yeah, like. we can do that. But as, as now, I, I mean, I'm asking your honor that uh, that the violation, recognize that the violation exists and uh, 30 days or $100 per day thereafter. And, and a reappearance on, uh, on, uh, on the next uh, hearing. The engineering is not giving letter because of the condition of the weapons. So that's a zero. Okay. Okay. Um, all right, for the record, I find the violation does exist. City's request for 35 days to comply. Hundred dollars per day thereafter, and uh, and, uh and yes, and a mandatory and reappearance. But that's not until August eighteenth, twenty twenty-two. Your Honor, yes, uh, Chief George Oliva. Uh, this is a restaurant where we're having a lot of public coming in and out. And this is very unsafe situation that we have there. Somebody can go through the railing and end on the first floor. That has happened previously in other locations. So I really would like to have some action taken ASAP. I would like for the owner to provide me a letter from an engineer 
We have prescribed remedy for those railing, and that should be no more than 15 days from today's day. Oh, we're gonna request on the follow up that session 9260, we're gonna request an order to vacate the second floor of the restaurant until we have a remedy to uh, provide some type of security for the person going to the restaurant. Uh, the city doesn't feel that this is, should be longer than 15 days, maybe less. But we need to to have a letter from the engineer with a prescribed remedy ASAP, and the city will request on the section 9260 an uh, order to vacate the premises. If we don't have a, a signed and sealed letter from the engineer of record, telling us that those really, the way they are, they are safe or he, or he can do a remedy, as an emergency remedy, to provide safety for the patrons on the restaurant. All right, so, I'm sorry, the city's request then is? 15 day to have a letter from an engineer of records, signed and sealed by him, telling him us the condition of the railing and if they are safe or not. If not, we would like to have an order to vacate the premises. The second floor cannot be used until those railings are taken care of. That's a life safety matter. All right. Uh, just would like to. Yes, sir. Just to reiterate again, we were not told of this violation until several weeks ago. Uh, spoke to the retail tenant. They. We, yes, sir. They are doing work under an open permit that specifically references repair work for the balconies. So we would like to be able to have the welder that we've got an estimate from to do the work ASAP under the supervision of Thomas Kelleher, the engineer. Whatever he's requesting has to be under an engineer prescribed, has to be in a letter to us, and then we will allow them or not to do it accordingly to the letter that we're gonna read from the engineer. But at this moment, this is a very unsafe, and if the owner haven't paid attention to his property, that's his responsibility under the Florida Building Code. The owner should be responsible for anything that is unsafe in his property. Also, the city session ordinance 102 mandates the owner to be responsible, and then the owner is responsible for safety hazards. All right. So yeah, at this to... moment, the city remained with the petition, and we would like to see the engineer later yesterday. All right. And also, just to one more thing, is we purchased the property November 15th of 2021. Okay. So we have not owned the property for 20 years and have been apprised of these, these issues. Again, we just were notified last, last month. It doesn't matter how long they bought the property, Your Honor. Yeah. The owner is still responsible under the law I, for I, safety I of the people going to his restaurant. Okay. Uh, I'm going to, for the record, find the violation does exist and the relief requested by the city is granted. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank, Thank you. you. I'm sorry, just to Thank be you. clear, the, the relief is? 15 days to provide a signed and sealed engineer report to um, report to the building department the status what, as to whether the railings are safe and the prescribed methodology for repair. And failing that, the second floor will be vacated until such time as that's complied with. Okay, and the open... Thank the open. you. You'll get a written order in the mail. Okay. Our next case is on page six, Inspector nash -Matic, property address 2943, Coral Shores Drive, owner Mike M. Sapsili, Zap, case number CE 20050269, notice posted at the property on 52722, posted at City Hall 6222. Good morning, Your Honor. Good morning. Good morning, Your Honor. Inspector Maddox presenting the city uh, for the case and addresses read. Uh, this case was opened on May 12, 2020. During this visit, the property it was observed that pavers were installed without obtaining a proper permit. The property was cited under 
Code Article 105.1 of a Florida Building Code 2020 edition. Inspection report was mailed on property on March 30th of 2021. Final notice was sent May 3rd, 2021. New final notice was sent on property on February 18, 2022, and notice of hearing was posted on this property on May 27, 2022. Current status of the case is of today, permit application has not been filed or applied for for any of the work that um, commenced on this property. At this time, we're asking your honor to find that the violation exists and to grant the property owner 63 days to come into compliance or a fine of $50 per violation per day thereafter. I'm sorry, how many days? 63. Okay. Until the next special Six, match. Uh, 62? 63 days. Uh, okay, that's what I would. Good. Okay, very good. All right, sir, if you'll speak right into the microphone and state your name, please. Good morning. Mike Subsali. Anything you'd like to add to what this gentleman said? No, I'm just going to go upstairs and start working on the permit. All right, very good. I find for the record the uh, violation does exist. 63 days to comply, $50 per day thereafter. Thank you, sir. Thank, thank you. Okay. Our next case is on page two. Property address 2670 East Sunrise Boulevard Parking. Inspector Alejandro Del Rio. Owner, Sunrise at Galleria, LLC, case number BE-211-20119. Notice posted at the property on 52622, posted at City Hall 6222. Building Inspector Alejandro Del Rio for the city, presenting case as read. Uh, this case was opened on December 21st, uh, 2021. The property was cited for the following violation, 47-20.20.H. There are parking facilities that are not maintained at this property, spalling, con spalling concrete, concrete cracks, exposed rebar, damage or broken barrier cables, damage, um, uh, masonry block walls, uh, missing or faded handicap and emergency signage. Uh, inspection report was mailed to the property owner on December 22nd, 2021. Final notice was mailed on February 3rd, 2022. Notice of hearing was posted on the property on May 26, 2022. City is requesting 90 days to comply or $100 per day thereafter. Okay, sir, if you'll speak right to the microphone and state your name, please. Uh, Matthew Jeffries. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, we're the the new owners, we closed on the property on 429. I've recently been in uh, receipt of the, the PE structural engineers uh, structural report. Um, we've received three or four bids for the property to do the repairs of the work. Um, in regards to the 90 days, I would just like to ask for 180 days because we are coming into some issues with the property and getting contractors to perform the work. Uh, we're kind of in a little bit of a pickle because we are a condo hotel because of the condo component, we're having problems with some of these smaller structural uh, repair companies doing the work because they don't want to touch, you know, for reasons due to, uh, you know, condo statutes. Uh, so we met with a few uh, contractors last week. We're meeting with a few this week, and, and we hope to get um, a, a vendor under contract, which we would immediately go in for permit. And then from there, from permit, I would like to have a 90-day extension. Uh, City would agree to 126 days. Okay. For the record, I find the violation does exist. 126 days to comply, $100 per day thereafter. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you. Our next case is on page 5. Inspector Nash Matic, property address 1204 Northeast 11th Ave, 1-3, case number BE-2109-0191. Owner Frank Guevara, notice posted at the property on 5522, posted at City Hall 6222. Inspector Matic presented the case and for addresses read. Um, this case was open on September 24, 2022. During my visit to the property, I observed the new fence was being installed without obtaining a necessary permit. The property was cited under 
Article 105.1 of uh, Florida Building Code 2020 edition. Inspection report was mailed to the property owners on September 28 of 2021. Final notice was mailed to the property on December 16, 2021. And notice of hearing was posted on property on May, zero, uh, May 5th, 2022. Um, current status of the case as of today, permit application has not been applied for this work. At this time, we are asking your honor to find that the violation exists and to grant the property owner 63 days to come into compliance or a fine of $50 per day per, uh, per day thereafter. Okay. All right, sir, if you'll speak right into the microphone and state your name, please. Uh, yes, good morning all. My name is Frank Guevara. I am the owner of the mentioned address. Um, thank you, Naj. Uh, he's been very helpful along this whole process. Um, I've had a contractor run out on run out on me with this. I had engaged him because he had built a fence down the street. I liked it, gave him the work. Um, he told me, yeah, no problem. I'll take care of it all. You know, it's this amount, sure. Um, once he saw, you know, the inspector come around and the notice get posted, he just bailed completely. Um, so I've been trying to, working with him and all, rectifying. Um, I do get some kind of mixed messages between the actual uh, building people and then with the inspector. The inspector's really great. He tells me, you know, fill this out, great one form. And then when I go with that to the building, they want more and then they ask for a whole other. Uh, so yeah, if I could get an adequate extension, I'd love to get this taken care of and, and finished. Okay, I'm sorry. The city's recommendation was how many days? 63. 63? 63, yeah. All right. Um, for, for the record, I find the violation does exist. The request of, uh, the, of the city is granted. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you. Our next case is on page 7, property address 722 Northeast 14th Ave, 1-4, Inspector Leonardo Martinez, owner Gary L. Mitchell, case number BE-2204-0013, Notice posted at the property on 5-10-22, posted at City Hall 6 22 Good morning, Your Honor. Uh, Good morning. It's Pedro Martinez uh, representing the city, case and others as read. Um, this is a four-unit uh, property that was built on 1949. Uh, I visited this property and observed that the roof overhang in the front was in very bad condition. I got pictures of the columns that were placed as a support to avoid the part of the roof to collapse. The roof projection around the house is in bad condition too. I was, I was able to look at the roof covering from the top and also observe that the owner has been applying elastomeric sealer to contain water leaks. Both from units are bordered up. And this is a four units uh, uh, property. I explained to Mr. Gary that is here, the owner, that he will um, the city will require from him an engineer letter stating that the building is sound and safe to be occupied. The owner and the tenant uh, were living in the property and, the, and the, the units are located in the back. I recently spoke to Gary and he said that the tenant already left the property on, on June 1st. So the property was cited on the city ordinance 9-259 on fit for human habitation and under 9-1D referring to Florida Building Code 2020, section 116 on safe structure and equipment. This case was opened and inspection report was sent to the owner on April 5th of 2022 the notice of hearing was posted at the property on May 10th of 2022. I received an email on May 5th from uh, Michael, the owner, informing me, informing that he hired an engineer to evaluate the property. Your Honor, I have some letters here that I would like to provide you as proof. I 
I responded at, at that moment that uh, we need a letter from the engineer advising that the property is safe to be occupied. Uh, we're asking your owner to find that the violation exists and to grant the property owner 63 days to come into compliance or fines of $50 per day thereafter. Uh, we would like to ask, uh, in this case, um, for a reappearing on 63 days to give us an update. Um, uh, Gary is in, uh, already in, on the contract with uh, an engineer. Uh, we also have to take in consideration that uh, hurricane season is, is here and uh, the, the property is, is, is in, in bad shape. I'm going to let the defendant to speak. All right, sir, if you'll speak right into the microphone and state your name. Uh, Gary Michael, uh, the property owner, also the uh, homesteaded uh, person for the four units. I'm the only person living at this address. Uh, uh, my family have own, has owned this place for 50 years or so, and uh, I've taken, I've moved in as a homesteader in the last year because my house burnt down in Miami due to a car fire. Uh, so this is my only place of residence right now. I take the uh, notice very seriously. Uh, I was able to find a structural engineer. Uh, he's provided you. Pro got the paperwork now, I believe, for his contract, as well as he's asking for a 120-day extension to do the work, which would include uh, filing permits and uh, the uh, some of the work itself. I can't guarantee you how much because it would depend upon the uh, contractor chosen. But uh, we're certainly in every way uh, willing to work and uh, do this as best as we can. Uh, I'm uh, uh, fully supportive. It's good meeting you, by the way, in person, finally. We never did. It's all been on phone. Uh, so I uh, will continue to work through this case if you if you permit me, sir. All right, I'm sorry. The city's request is? Uh, Your Honor, we're trying to work with him. And uh, we, we it's in, you know, no, uh, we are agreed to, to, to work with Mr. Gurry, but uh, really, uh, I mean, we need we need uh, the process to speed up a little bit, 120 days for them to submit permits, uh, it's, it's a lot of time. I mean, we have the hurricane season here, and uh, we would like uh, to give him uh, a 63 day at this moment, and uh, uh, ask him to reappear uh, to update the case um, on, on the process of, of we, between him and the engineer and, and drawings and, and permit applications so far, and so on. So, 63 days and every appearance. Okay. Sir, I'm just going by what the structural engineer sent me. He said he needed well, I know. We, we got to get started and we got to have an initial deadline. And so for the record, I'm going to find the violation does exist and the relief requested by the city is granted. Thank you, Your Honor. And do you want a mandatory appearance on this? Yeah, reappearing in 63 days. 63 days now requesting and $50 per day thereafter. But I, I mean, we would like him to reappear to give us an update of what's, what's, what we are in the process. All right. A mandatory appearance, I guess it'll be uh, August 18th. Yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Our next case is on page three, Chief George Oliva. Property address 28. Sorry. At 2841 Northeast 32nd Street, case number BE2202. One second, one second. I'm looking at the wrong page. Sorry. Yeah, page three. Page three at the bottom. Okay, property address 2451 Northeast 49th Street, owner Aspen House Condo Association, Inc. Case number BE2202-0016. Notice posted at the property on 5-2022, posted at City Hall 6-2-22. George Orlim, on behalf of the city, case and address as read. This case is regarding the 40-year compliance that they haven't submitted the report to the city. And the city is asking for 42 days for the owners to come into compliance by submitting a report to the city or $100 per day thereafter. Okay. 
All right, ma'am, if you'll speak right into the microphone and state your name, please. Good morning. My name is Kathy Shea, building manager for Aspen House. Right. And I wanted to let you know I do have a letter to, that I've hired um, an engineer program, right. um, people to come out and get um, to start working on it. Uh, you own it. The letter doesn't mean anything. It, she has to file a report for us to provide m more time. Right now, it's only 42 days and $100 after. Can I get some assistance then, sir? Because I've called and asked for, because I've never done the report that you're talking about. Uh, the city cannot advise you, ma'am. Sorry. So you I just to need go to have to, the engineer you write have the to report. You need to talk to your engineer and let him know that you have to come with that report to the city ASAP. Okay, or I. You're going to get fines. Okay. Um, question, and I know that I need to talk to them, and I've emailed and called many and multiple times. Um, I've got an um, engineer company that we hired. They have not given me a date when they can come out because they're so far behind, and we're trying to get this in place to be taken care of. I, we want this done as soon as possible. Uh, that had nothing to do with the 40-year program. Um, unfortunately, the state and the county of Broward County is very stiff with the requirement <clears throat> of the 40 years. You need to come into compliance and we are reporting 42 days. If you need repairs, we will give you more time. Okay, so I have 42 days until... But you got to 42 days to provide me a report from the engineer of records about the structure and the electrical system in the building. Okay. All right, for the record, I find okay. the violation does exist. 42 days to comply, $100 per day thereafter. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Do I get this? Gender? No, thank you. Okay. Our next case is at the bottom of page 11. Chief George Oliva, property address 3700, Gold Ocean Drive, owner, Royal Ambassador Condo Association, Inc., case number CE1908-0429. This case was first heard on 2-11-20 to comply by 8-9-20. Fine suspended as noted. One section complied at $100 totaling $34,900, fines imposed 61721, order vacated of 61721. The city is requesting to vacate the order of 61721 and reimpose fines to administrative costs of $1,275. That's the request from the city, Your Honor. We are requesting for the fine to be reduced to the administration fee of 1275 All right. Sir, if you'll state your name for the record. Brian McLean, property manager. Okay. And I assume you're in agreement with this disposition. Yes, please. Okay. I'm going to impose cost of $1,275. And vacate. And vacate the uh, order of June 17, 2021, and reimpose. Thank you, Your Honor. Very good. Thank you, Your Honor. Our next case at the bottom of page 10, property address 941 Southwest 30th Ave, owner Keith Gale, case number CE2010131, Inspector Nash Maddock. This case was ordered to repeat, reappear. This case was first heard on 41521 to comply by 61721. One section not complied at $50. Fines imposed at the 51922 hearing and ordered to reappear. Good morning. Um, just updating the case. The case is still not in compliance. So, um, on the last magistrate, the defendant wasn't able to speak because. Okay, case is in compliance? No, it's not. N not in compliance? No. Okay. All right, sir, if you'll state your name for the record. Your name. Good morning, Judge. My name is uh, Warren Gale. I'm uh, here to. Oh, for my brother, Keith Gale. What really happened, Your Honor? My brother is uh, he's very sick. He's a subcontractor. And he fell from a, uh, a three-story building, break his shoulder and his hip. And uh, he did hire um, an architect and a, and a contractor to do the job. Now, they did submit a permit to the city and it was turned back because of some um, error that the architect made. 
But my brother made a mistake. He paid off the architect. And when they to the rewrite it, they want more money. So what happened, I have to take it over and to get everything over again. So I'm asking for some time to get that done because I have to do it. All right. Well, you're ultimately responsible. So, you... yeah. okay. And I'm sorry, the city's request was? The fines the... were imposed at the last hearing. Oh, fines were imposed at the last hearing. So what are we doing today? Your Honor, I believe it was just an order to reappear, but the fines were already imposed at the last hearing. Okay. There's nothing further for Your Honor to do necessarily, unless you want to give um, the property owners rep more time. Uh, Judge, can I ask this? Yes. Okay, I guarantee by now until October, everything will be fine comply. Because I'm my brother and I, my other brother, is also a subcontractor. It just wants some time to get it compliant. That's all I need. And everything will be good. Well, I, I, have you applied for the new permit? Yes, we are going to because the, the first permit was applied for. No one can find the architects. I do find a contractor, but I'm going to use different contractor to do it because I have contract that work for me also. I have other properties in Broad County okay. can do all my jobs, so I'm going to do all everything for him. Okay. Um. Legally altered. Um, so no hearings in July. Is that correct? Okay. Huh? No hearings. Okay. Um, all right, sir. I'm I'm going to give you a 63-day extension and a mandatory reappearance at the hearing on August 18th, 2022. So you are saying, Judge, I must. Um, complete the sir, job? Sir, that's what I'm going to do. No matter what you say, that's what I'm going to do. Okay. 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 You're lucky to get that. Thank you. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. That's it. 60, you get a written order in the mail. 63, 63 day extension. And stay the fines during that. Stay of the fines as of this date, but a mandatory reappearance on August 18th, 2022. You'll get a written order in the mail. Okay. Thank you, Judge. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. <clears throat> Our next case is on page 12. Inspector Jorge, Jorge Martinez, property address 2054 Southwest 30th Terrace. Owner Tamir Vardy, case number BE2102-0008. This case was first heard 61721 to comply by 91621. Fine suspended as noted. One section not complied at $50. Cities requesting to impose the full amount of $7,300, which continues to accrue. Inspector Martinez for the city, presenting case number and address as read. Uh, this case is not in compliance. I'm going to let the respondent speak. Good morning, Your Honor. Good morning. OK, my name is Tamir Vardy. Your, your turn to speak, OK? Not in, not in compliance. I'm going to let him speak. OK, go ahead. But the, the case is not in compliance. Correct. Okay. All right. Go ahead, sir. State your name for the record. Tamir Vardy. Go ahead. Um, I understand it took a long time to uh, get in compliance with this situation. And I have a lot of challenges with contractor and engineer that don't show up and, of course, money. Uh, but to be honest with you, most, most of the struggle I have, it's probably with myself emotionally to let it go. And I finally camp to the fact that I'm just going to take this structure down. And um, I think that's, that's what, you know, I, I give up on it, finally. I already start taking it down. And uh, honestly, I need a little bit more time, only probably like 30 days just to finish it. I didn't make this decision before. I want to fix it and get it to be with compliance. But uh, I just give up on it. And I just need, I start taking it down and I just need probably like 30 days just to finish it and I can go sleep. <laughs> I didn't sleep for a long time, honestly, for that okay. situation. So that's, that's all I'm asking. All right, so he gets the last word. Yes, we can give uh, 63 days to comply. 
The inspector said um, he can give 63 days an extension to comply because if um, the property owner is demolishing the okay. unpermitted structure, doesn't need a permit to do that, and once it's demolished, okay. um, we can close Good. the case. Good. So ordered. Appreciate it. Thank, Thank you. you. <clears throat> Our next case is on page four. Inspector Hector Suarez, property address 1205 Northeast 13th Ave. Owner Sandra M. Birdsong, Sandra M. Mayor Liverpool Trust. Case number BE 22030086. Notice posted at the property on 52622. Posted at City Hall 6222. Good morning, Your Honor. Inspector Suarez presenting case BE 22030086 for 1205 Northeast 13th Avenue. Property was inspected on March 23rd, 2022 on a complaint, and the following violation was observed as depicted in the photos, 91D. Any violation of the Florida Building Code shall be a violation of this section and punishable as provided for in this section. There is construction work at this property that was started or completed without obtaining the required permits consistent of, but not limited to, new driveway, new walkway, and new shed. Inspection report was mailed to owner listed in BCPA on March 23, 2022. Final notice was sent on April 22, 2022. As of pre-hearing inspection on June 10, 2022, violation remains. The city is requesting 42 days or $50 a day thereafter for each for a violation. All right, ma'am, if you'll speak right into the microphone and state your name, please. Good morning, Your Honor. My name is Sandra Mayor. All right. Um, anything you'd like to add to what this gentleman said? Yeah, I've been in communication with uh, Inspector Suarez. He's been helpful. It was a point of confusion on my part as to the order of how I was supposed to proceed. I just want to say that... Um, there was, I own this property nearly 10 years. My mom is, and she'd kill me for telling you, but she's turning 88 on June 19th, Sunday. She has uh, mobility issues. She walks with a walker. There was a previous driveway and walkway that were gravel. Um, and so it caused significant problems for her to get out of her home and okay. where I live with her, but to get out of the house. So um, I didn't realize that you had to get a permit if you're changing from gravel to pavers. That's where the issue started. And as to the shed, um, at the time that I got the shed was right after purchasing the property. It was one of those Miami-Dade eligible, hurricane-proof things that I bought from a, okay. eligible, you know, a company. They came and installed it, and I didn't know at the time that I needed a permit either. But it's been there about nine years. So with Inspector Suarez's help, um, I'm going to, I have engaged an engineer. So it's just a matter of time for him to go there to, basically they have to make sure that any water will not go into the street. You know, they have to create some sort of swale for the driveway. And then I'll have to get the specs to the engineer on the shed. So I understand the process now. I've been in communication, as I said, with the city and with Inspector Suarez. So I'm asking for a little more time. I think 63 days is what I heard the next hearing is gonna happen. So that's really the request today. Your Honor, the city doesn't uh, object to that. Um, I would say also because of the new driveway, the new shed, it could uh, with the engineer inspects. Let's do 91 days, please. City's requesting compliance in 91 days, okay. Your Honor. All right. Um, for the record, going to find the violation does exist. 91 days to comply, $50 well, per thank day. Thank you, Your Honor. Well, thank you very much. I appreciate it. Thank you. Our next case is on page eight, Inspector Leonardo Martinez, property address 23025, Center Ave, case number BE2112013, owner Lakshmi Adepali, Kranthi Alapati, and I'm sorry, NP, sorry. Notice posted at the property on 51022, posted at City Hall 6222. Inspector Martinez representing the city. Case and others as read. I visited this property with Chief Plumbing Enrique Salvador, and we observed that new windows and doors were installed, new drywall in the rooms, 
and due to an extensive plumbing work, almost all the brick pavers were removed. Wooden pergola, pergola um, was installed in the rear of the property, and a detached garage was converted into a garden apartment. The property was cited for work without permit on the Florida Building Code 2020, Section 105.1. This case was opened and inspection report was sent to the property owner on December 3rd of 2021. The final notice was sent to the property owner on January 3rd of 2022, and the notice of hearing was posted in the property on May 10th of 2022. <clears throat> um, the windows and door permit was applied and issued on February 11, 2022. The drywall permit was applied and issued on March 30 of 2022. The remaining uh, violations are the pergola uh, that is in the rear of the property by the pool area and the garage converted into a garden department. Um, we are asking your owner to find that the violation exists and to grant the property owner 63 days to come into compliance or fines of $50 per violation per day thereafter. All right, sir, if you'll state your name for the record. My name is Matt Roque Pasco, property manager. You understand what this gentleman said? Yeah, the, the work on the, um, the garden apartment that was done previous to our purchase, and so we're now applying for, we reached out to the engineer to get it legalized. All right. And for the pergola, we're still working if that's going to be able to be legalized or if it's going to have to be removed. But the rest of the work was, was permitted and we're in inspection. Okay, I find that for the record, the violation does exist. 63 days to comply, $50 per day thereafter. Thank you, Or. Thank you. Thank you. Our next case at the top of page eight, Inspector Leonardo Martinez, property address 2537 Marathon Lane, owner Cherry Houses, LLC, case number BE 22050139. Notice posted at the property 52322, posted at City Hall 6222. Morning, Your Honor, Inspector Martinez, representing the city, case and others as read. I visited this property on May, and uh, um, I visited this property, and on my way to the front door, I observed through all the fence some workers. I called to them, and one opened the gate. I asked who was in charge, and also I asked for the contractor or the owner, and no one had an answer. At the time of my inspection, I have pictures already of the addition that they were building in the back of, uh, of, the, of the property from Court Inspector Holloway, Linda Holloway. I informed them that I was posting on a stock work order and they have to leave the property because there was no permit for the scope of work that they were, that was taking place. The property was cited uh, for work without permit onto Florida Building Code 2020, Section 105.1. While I was waiting for the workers to pick up and leave the property, another person showed up. He did not want to identify himself. He removed the stop work order from the front door, and he was asking me about the stop work order, and my response was that if he was not able to identify himself, I did not have to give him any information. When the worker left the house, I left the, ha the property with them too. I received a phone message from the owner, Justin Hamilton, when I arrived to my office. I called him back with the uh, assistant building official, Joe Pascarello, who is present here. The owner did not want to accept that he was in violation of the Florida Building Code, and the work that, he, that was taking place at his property needed a permit. Um, at the time of our conversation, we advised that no work should continue at the property until permits that uh, needs to be applied were issued. And we let him know very clear that if work continue, we will send the police. Next day, on my 20th, May 20th, we received a call around 6.30 a.m. from a neighbor informing us that the, there were workers at the property doing work. Since that uh, there was an stop work order posted the day before, and this would be a violation of the stop work order, we contacted the uh, Florida Police Department. 
For later, the police department arrived to the neighbor uh, uh, house that made the call, and they were able to take pictures and videos of workers doing work in the addition that they were building without permit in the rear of the property. For later, the police department proceeded to stop the workers, and, uh, and after, they were able to meet with the owner, Justin Hamilton, who arrived to the property. Florida police, um, Florida police Department informed us they met with the owner inside the property and they observed the house has a kitchen being replaced and the entire interior appears to be newly remodeled beside a big hole, a, a big hole in the kitchen floor. Investigating Google, I was able to find the listing of the property and I observed the house was entire remodeled. The kitchen in the listing appeared older, and now it's being remodeled as observed by detect Detective Teddy, who is here, and Detective Hayes. None of the work done in the interior of this property have permit, uh, has been permit, or there is any permit uh, record in the city. I added the interior work to the case violations that must be addressed by the owner of the property, the, the work that was done. Um, inspection report was sent to the property owner on May 18th of 2021. The notice of hearing was posted at the property on May 23rd of, 20, of uh, I'm sorry, 2022. Um, there is a permit applied in, in the city for legalization of game room addition and a new bathroom on existing area. The permit was applied on June 2nd of 2022. The permit is in process. None of the work that was done inside the house hasn't been, uh, no, no permit application hasn't been applied. We're asking your owner to find that the violation exists and to grant the property owner 63 days to come into compliance of fines of $100 per violation per day thereafter. We also, uh, your owner, have here and, and uh, right now one of the neighbors that live on the, on the, around that neighborhood area that would like to speak to. Um, all right. uh, the owner. All right. Yes. Let's let the neighbor speak. I'm yeah. afraid. Chief. I, I just want to go in the records. Uh, when my inspector post a uh, stop work order under the Florida statutes and the Florida building code section 115.3, it's a violation of any person to remove the stop work order when it's posted. Only the inspector has the authorization to remove it. Now the property owner none of the work, that is a violation that can be, a, that person can be arrested, ONTA, by removing a store work order. I just wanna go on the record because the gentleman that owned this property committed that violation of the Florida statute. Okay. All right, sir, I'm gonna let you speak next. If you'll speak right into the microphone and state your name, please. Uh, my name is John Bunton. I live on Marathon Lane and I'm surrounded by properties owned by um, this individual, Justin Hamilton. He, he is, okay. He's remodeled many homes in the area. In fact, he sent me a text and told me, I had the picture up and then I lost it. Hold on, I'm sorry. His text, John, I have remodeled over 175 houses and 90 of them just in Riverland since 2009. He, he buys these homes, goes in, puts up gates, solid gates, so the inspectors can't see in the backyard. Some he pulls a permit for, for the gate I'm talking. Some he does not. The inspectors can't see in the backyard. He goes in, covers up the windows, when willy-nilly does anything he wants inside, these guys can't get in, so he just gets away with it. He builds, he put an addition on the house behind me, a structural addition with a deck on top, no permits. Remodeled the whole house at 2531 Key Largo Lane. He's also remodeling at 2549 
Marathon Lane has done the same thing in there, remodeled the whole inside of the house. If you look on Zillow, you can see there are windows removed. You can see that the doors for the laundry room have been removed. He built a gazebo in the backyard with no permit within two feet of the property line. Your Honor, we have a case. I'm sorry to interrupt you. We have a case on that property too because of uh, the wood picket that he installed on the PVC fence and we also have the gazebo. But um, it, it appears that he knows the system. If we cannot get in, we cannot prove the violation. And that's what's happening in here. All right, okay. He, he threatened me, Your Honor, and he also threatened the building official. My, me, my wife, my 75-year-old sister-in-law, we're not gonna be bullied. If I have to spend the rest of my life in court, so be it. All right, thank you, sir. Thank you. Okay, on behalf of the owner, good morning. Good morning, Your Honor. Hofeet Lautenberg, I'm an attorney for the respondent. You'll speak right into the microphone. Okay, good morning. Hofeet Lautenberg, attorney for the defend, uh, respondent. Um, I, you know, I'm, I'm here today for this particular case. I can't really speak as to the remaining issues. Um, there's a lot of allegations being made. All I could tell you is that um, I've taken on representation of this respondent. Um, he purchased, I mean, there's alleged, let's just say, um, misrepresentation made in this purchase of this property, which was only recently purchased. Um, and, I mean, he has witnesses that the seller had um, advised that everything, any any work was done with permits. Um, so, so, you know, partially, you know, he was unaware of, of some of these, and I know on the original notice, it was only about the addition, which uh, application has already been submitted, um, and it's actively being processed. Um, the remaining items, I mean, I, you know, I'm happy to work with the building department to make sure that we get everything remedied and everything up to code and permitted. Um, you know, I, I understand, I mean, I know a previous respondent made a comment about he's given up, you know, I get it. I, I serve as a special magistrate in Cooper City, so I understand the the importance of this, the home is vacant for whatever that's worth, so it's not uh, a threat to anyone's um, health, safety, or welfare. Um, we just need time to comply. Like I said, there's a lot of stuff going on, and, and I will make sure we will remain diligent in getting everything up, you know, everything cured. So. And the final recommendation from the city was? 63 days to comply, to obtain permits, yeah. or $100 per day thereafter. All right. For the record, I find the violation does exist. 63 days to comply, $100 per day thereafter. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you. Thank you, Your Honor. Your Honor, at this time, we need to take a five-minute recess. Thank you.
Our next case is on page 12, Inspector Jorge Martinez, property address 1301 Northwest 24th Ave. Owner, Jose Ricardo Castellanos Valdez and Maria Y. Espinol Calendres. Case number CE 20080564. This case was first heard 71521 to comply by 91621. Fine suspended as noted. One section not complied at $50. City is requesting to impose the full amount of $7,300. Inspector Martinez for the city presenting case number and address as read. Uh, I'm going to let the respondent speak. Um, my name is Marjorie Spinal. Okay, ma'am. You're going to have to speak up a lot louder. Speak right into the microphone. First, uh, start, state your name. My name is Marjorie Spinal. And... Ya quité todo. I take it. Take out. She just said that she removed everything. I'm sorry. Say again. I moved everything. You've moved everything. Yes. The sheds and the shaded structures. Yes. They're gone. Yes. You took care of them. <laughs> All right. Uh, well, of course, the uh, uh, inspector has to come out and say, so what I'm going to do is um, grant a what? For the next hearing, 63 days. I'm sorry? Yeah, 63 days? Yeah. Okay. I'm going to grant a 63-day extension and stay the fines as of this date. Once you come into compliance, we'll talk about the uh, fines that are, have accrued, but they're stayed as of this date. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Our next case, Inspector Nash Maddock on page 6. Property address 3051 Northeast 47th Court, 207. Case number BE 22010122. Owner, Rafael Esteban Sierra, Yulia Sierra. Notice posted at the property on 527.22, posted at City Hall 6222. Morning, Your Honor. Inspector Maddock presenting the case and address is read. Uh, this case was open on January 25th, 2022. During my visit to the property, I observed the kitchen and two bathrooms were remodeled. Um, this property was cited under the Code Article 105.1 of, uh, of uh, Florida Building Code, um, 2020 edition. A special report was mailed to the property owner on February 20th of 2021. Final notice was posted on April 6th, 2022. And notice of hearing was posted on the property on April 6, 2022. I apologize, the inspection report was mailed to the property owner in 2022, February 20th. Current status of the case is, as of today, permit application has not been applied for, for this property that, that was cited for. At this time, we're asking your honor to find that violation exists and to grant the property owner 63 days to come into compliance or a fine of $50 per day Thereafter. Okay, ma'am, if you'll speak right into the microphone and state your name. Good morning. My name is Yulia Sierra. Okay. Did you understand what the gentleman said? Any questions or anything you'd add? No, we are, he's been really helpful. We already found a few contractors and okay. every tool. Right. Very good. Okay. I find the violation does exist. 63 days to comply, $50 per day thereafter. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Our next case is on page two. Inspector Jose Saragusti, property address 326 Southwest 15th Street, owner Marshmallow Properties Holdings <clears throat> Corp, case number BE 2201-0176, notice posted at the property 42722, posted at City Hall 6222. Good morning, Your Honor. Inspector Saragusti, on behalf of the city, presenting the case as read. This case was opened in January 1st, 2021. Inspection report, uh, I inspect the property and found the fence replacement. I posted the stop work order. Inspection report was mailed on February 1st, 2022. Notice of hearing was mailed on February 28, 2022 and withdraw from the hearing. New final notice was mailed on April 11, 2022. I called to the owner representative on June 6, 2022, and let her know that the case is already scheduled for the hearing. 
no permit issue for this violation. This property has been cited under Florida Building Code 2020 Section 105.1 Work Without Permit. The city is requesting 63 days to comply or $50 per day thereafter. I will let the respondent speak. Good morning. Good morning. Upon uh, the inspector showing up, uh, we were replacing pickets on the fence. We were repairing pickets that were, we were dealing with a situation with overgrowth in between the two fences. There's two fences on the property. There's a metal fence that surrounds the property. And based on the original permit by the city when the property was built, it's considered a pool barrier fence. We were replacing the pickets because the pickets were being damaged by interior growth between the two fences and it was pushing the pickets away. I'm not denying that I repaired the pickets because we did. And the job was under $300 for the material costs and everything. But the issue that I have is there's other properties on our block, our entire street that have fences. And based on the city's permit website, Nobody has permits for any of these other fences. Um, in fact, sorry, only, sir, oh, sir, doesn't matter. Oh well, hold on. Doesn't uh, matter. Let me. Can okay. I? Let me just finish on this. Different case. Not well, your no, no, no. Case. It's, it's not about a different case because okay. I'm being selectively enforced here, and especially because a person across the street, a neighbor across the street, was doing a fence. I called and complained. I have the call log here. I called and complained, and took pictures of the work being done, the city came out, the complaint was done on 4-6, and the city came out on 4-7 by George Olivia, and it was case was closed by Hector Suarez, and it was very obvious that the fence was being repaired and redone. I'm not hold gonna on. judge that case, No, no, sir. But, but here's my problem. I'm being selectively enforced. All these other properties on my street, nobody else has a permit, and I'm being selectively enforced. Is it because I'm Jewish? All right, you're going to go and selectively enforce other properties on that street who can have a, who can have a fence and who can't without a permit because this person's black, because this person's white, because this person's Asian, because this person's Jewish, and you're going to selectively enforce who can have a fence and do a repair. That's I'm sorry, that's completely wrong here, and I want this noted on the record because here I have every single property with fences. Even my neighbor did a fence, and there's no permit, but yet. A complaint comes from a neighbor, disgruntled neighbor who I've had nothing but issues with, who has an issue with me because of my religion, decides to call and file a complaint, and then the inspector comes out and has an issue because of my fence, but yet my other neighbor who has a fence with no permit, everybody on the street who has fence with no permit, and it's obvious. The fences are there. Why aren't anybody else getting uh, enforced except for me? I'm very concerned with this, and I'm hoping that you can resolve this today. For the record, I find the violation does exist 63 days to comply, $50 per day. Well, I don't agree with that. And I'm going to make sure this gets maximum media attention. And in fact, if this needs to go to a federal case for a federal jurisdiction, I'm going to make sure because I'm being discriminated against and I want that on the record. Your this is selective been, enforcement. Your case I'm being been selectively enforced because of my religion and everything else. I'm leaving in. voluntarily. Okay. That's wrong. Completely wrong. Okay, do we have any more respondents here for a special magistrate hearing? Is everyone here for a lien reduction? Yes? Okay. Your Honor, this, this concludes all of our respondents. Going back to page one, Inspector Linda Holloway, property address 813 Southwest 4th Court, 1-4, case number BE2202-0074, owner, Cell Boat Bend Residences, LLC. Notice posted at the property on 524-22, posted at City Hall 6222. Good morning, Your Honor. Inspector Linda Holloway, City of Fort Lauderdale Building Services Division, presenting case BE 22020074, property address 813 Southwest 4th Court. This property was in inspected on February 10th, 2022, and the following violation was observed, 9-1D. Any violation of the Florida Building Code shall be a violation of the section and punishable as provided for in this section. 
there is construction work at this property that was started or completed without obtaining the permits required the required permits consisting of but not limited to altering and or replacing the driveway including the swale area without a permit on February 11, 2022, an inspection report allowing 30 days to obtain a permit was mailed to the owner on Broward County Records. March 17, 2022, no permit was applied for and a 30-day extension was granted. April 18, 2022, a final notice was mailed to the owner of record on Broward County Property Records. A pre-hearing inspection on June 15th shows that no permit was issued, therefore the violation still exists, and the city is requesting 63 days to comply or a fine of $50 per day thereafter per violation be imposed. I find the violation does exist, 63 days to comply, $50 per day thereafter. Thank you, Your Honor. Inspector Mary Rich, property address 1401 Southwest 1st Ave. Owner, Point Sienna Storage, JV LLC, <clears throat> in care of Snapbox, Point Sienna LLC, case number BE 22040131, notice posted at the property 52522, posted at City Hall 6222. Uh, good morning, Your Honor. Case and address is as read. Um, property was originally cited on 419 2022, and the following violation was cited. Section 28-155A through F. The existing fire backflow prevention device has not been tested for the subsequent recertification as per City of Fort Lauderdale Municipal Code of Ordinances, Chapter 25-153 and 28-155. As of the pre-hearing inspection on June 16, 2022, the violation remains and BSI Online has not been updated as of today. Um, I have had contact with the property representative, Mike, who said they're working on um, working with their fire company to update BSI. The city is requesting 42 days or $25 per day thereafter. I find the violation does exist. 42 days to comply, $25 per day thereafter. Thank you. Page two, property address, Inspector Alejandro Del Rio, property address 717, Pennsylvania Ave, case number BE211. 20062, owner, Eves Fenelis, homestead exempt, Marie Vida Maxinet. Notice posted at the property on 5622, posted at City Hall 6222. Building Inspector Alejandro El Rio for the city, presenting case as read. Uh, this case was opened on December 10th, 2021. Property was cited for the following violation. Florida Building Code 2020, Section 111.1.1, Master Bathroom and Family Room Addition, completed under permit number PM 16070309, is being used without first obtaining a certificate of occupancy. Inspector, uh, sorry, inspection report was mailed to the property owner on December 15, 2021. Final notice was mailed on February 9, 2022. Notice of hearing was posted on the property at, on May 6, 2022. City is requesting 28 days to comply or $50 per day thereafter. I find the violation does exist. 28 days to comply, $50 per day thereafter. Thank you. Page three, recalling uh, 2300 Northwest 6th Street, Chief George Oliva, owner SKAB LLC, case number BE 21090177. City is requested to vacate order from 1 2022. Notice posted at the property 52622, posted at City Hall 6222. This is case uh, 0177. Yes, this is the one for the... Right, uh, Your Honor, uh, we have an issue here that they did file the report. They provide the city with a check. But what happened, the check bounced. So we have a non-sufficient phone check. So now we have to retreat the 180 days that we provide and go back to 42-day extension for them to come back to the city and pay the the fee for the 40 years, which is $300. All 
All right. Uh, so you're requesting 42 days or $100 per day, right? Yes, ma'am. Just to be clear. 42 days or $100 per day. Okay. I find the violation does exist. The request, uh, the relief requested by the city is granted. Yes, sir. Thank you. Property on page four, property address 2841 Northeast 32nd Street, owner, Durham Apartments Condo Association, Inc., case number BE 22020091, notice posted at the property 51022, posted at City Hall 6222. George, you live in behalf of the city. This is a 40-year case, and... The owners did complain by bringing the report to the city, but the report has deficits and it needs repair. So the city is requesting for the owners 180 days to do the repairs and submit a new report with no repair to the city or $100 per day thereafter. I find the violation does exist, 180 days to comply, $100 per day thereafter. Thank you, Your Honor. Moving on, um, at the bottom of page six, case number BE 22010052 is closed. Page seven at the bottom, property address 1015 Southeast 15th Street, 6D, Inspector Leonardo Martinez. Case number BE 22020143, Celine Lemoy and Perriette Lemoy. Notice posted at the property on 5622, posted at City Hall 6222. Inspector Martinez representing the city, case and others as read. I visited this property because there was a complaint for work without permit in Unit 6C. When I observed the door of Unit 6D open and somebody was working in there. Inside the unit uh, uh, was Eric. He was doing baseball and moldings at the time of my inspection. Eric had identified himself as the brother of the owner and he allowed us access into the property. While inside, I observed a new kitchen, new flooring, new water heater, new electrical panel, and high hats in the kitchen area. The property was cited for work without permit on the Florida Building Code 2020, Section 105.1. This case was opened, an inspection report was sent to the property owner on February 24th of 2022. The final notice was mailed out to the property owner on March 29 of 2022 and the notice of hearing was posted at the property on May 6th of 2022. Uh, permit to remodel the kitchen, new flooring, a new electrical panel, a new recessed lights in kitchen was applied on May 12th of 2022. And also a plumbing permit was applied for a new water heater and new uh, sink faucet. All of these both permits uh, are in process. We are asking your owner to find that the violation exists and to grant the property owner 63 days to come into compliance or fines of $50 per violation per day thereafter. Uh, the violation does exist, 63 days to comply, $50 per day thereafter. Thank you, your owner. Okay, moving on to page 10, hearing to impose fines. Property address 1590 Southwest 31st Ave, owner, CISA Investment Group, Inc., case number BE 22010008. This case was first heard on 41422 to comply by 51922. One section not complied at $50. City is requesting to impose the full amount of $1,350, which continues to accrue. Okay, the city's request is granted. Page 11 at the top, property address. 724 Northwest 6th Ave, owner 724 Northwest 6th Ave, 6th Ave LLC, case number BE 20050272. This case was first heard 41521 to comply by 52721. One section complied at $100. City is, is requesting to reduce fines, to impose fines to administrative costs of $1,275. The administrative cost $1,275 is imposed. Property address 1321 Northwest 6th Street, case number BE 20080093, owner New Hope Baptist Church of Fort Lauderdale, Inc. This case was first heard on 41521 to comply by 101221. One section complied at $100. City is requesting to reduce fines to administrative costs of $1,275. The 
Uh, city's request is granted. Administrative cost $1,275 is imposed. Page 12 at the top. Property address 841 Arizona Ave. Owner Peter R. and Vicente Carvalho. Case number CE 2010174. This case was first heard 5 2021 to comply by 8 1921. Fine suspended is noted. One section not complied at $50. City is requesting to impose fines of $7,300, which continues to accrue. Uh, the city's request is granted. At the bottom of page 12, property address, K 131 Southwest 31st Ave, case number BE2110281, owner Janice Canella. This case was first heard on 31722 to comply by 51922. One section not complied at $50. City is requesting to impose fines of $1,350 which continues to accrue. The city's request is granted. Page 13, property address 5240 Northeast 14th Terrace, owner 5240 Northeast 14th Inc., case number BE2106-0112. This case was first heard 12-16-21 to comply by 1-2022. Fine suspended as noted. City's requesting to impose the full amount of $5,550, which continues to accrue. The city's request is granted. Property address 6000 Northwest 21st Ave, case number BE2008015. Owner, City of Fort Lauderdale, and care of Fort Lauderdale Executive Airport. This case was first heard 12 16 21 to comply by 1 2022. Fine suspended as noted. One section complied at $50. And I will let the inspector finish. Yes, uh, sorry. Uh, Inspector Saragusti, on behalf of the city, presenting the case as read. The case is in compliance. City is requesting the administrative cost of $341. All right. Uh, the city's request is granted. Administrative costs will be imposed. Yeah. No, uh, 300, administrative cost of $341. Yeah, oh, he's, he's imposing the $341. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Mm -hmm. Thank At you. this time, Your Honor, we would like to have all the cases that are listed on page 14 into the record as closed. Granted. And this concludes our June 16, 2022 special magistrate hearing for the build, for building.